So, welcome to the third episode of Pixel by Pixel. I'm here with Adam Sprague, the developer of Hidden in Plain Sight, which very, very soon, if not already, is going to be available on Ouya. You may have seen it on Xbox Live Indie Games or as part of the Indiecade Festival last year, was it? Yeah. Yep. yep. Welcome. You're in San Diego, right? I'm in San Diego. Um... I, I was thinking that the weather would be sort of crummy today, but it's a really nice day. Uh, I wish I could get out and go to the beach. <laughs> yeah, we as offices in Los Angeles are right at the Santa Monica Promenade, and the yeah. parking structure, when I park on the very top of it, just looks right out to the ocean. And It's hard to stay inside sometimes. Oh, I look at it longingly, yes. Right. Yeah, well, speaking of, like, what is your day-to-day -day like as an indie dev right now? You know, it's funny. I was thinking about this when I was driving home from my actual job, you know, talking about this interview. Um, I, I'm not sure really what the term indie dev means these days because it seems yeah. to be, you know, a, a, an indie developer, the, the term is sort of stratified now. I mean, I really consider myself like a hobbyist developer. Um, you know, I, I can't call myself an indie game developer when people like Andy Schatz or Jonathan Blow or Phil Fish or those guys are indie game developers who make, you know, sort of games with contracts. You know, they spend a lot of money um, possibly or spend years making a game. I have a career job. I've got a wife. I've got uh, two children, one, one very recently. Um, games and playing games and making games is a hobby for me uh, you know it's sort of a nights and weekends thing that i do in my spare time if i can um no i so think that's, that's a great clarification actually um and really great to point out but there are uh all sorts of different developers really, yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah. and um it's not like every um i think it is often sort of misperceived that every person uh doing in doing games on the side is hoping to make it their full-time career you know right. one day which is not necessarily right. what the bottom line has to be you know and i think hidden in plain sight is actually a great example of that where it is so just this small genuine piece of fun right uh that you were able to make because you were just doing it for fun for yourself you know, it's a local multiplayer only game. You have to have Great. people in the same room to play with you. And that, if you want to sell a lot of copies, is suicidal, <laughs> right? right? I mean, that, that's not the best way to, 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 to make a game with a widespread appeal. And so I'm just like, well, screw it. You know, this is the game I want to make and um, I'm just going to do it. And, and, and it was fun making it. And that's, that's my motivating factor is just doing something for fun. That's fun for me to do. That's interesting. Um, kind of how well it sells be damned i love that yeah. it's so punk rock and <laughs> i was talking to matt thorson earlier um the developer of towerfall about something similar because towerfall is also a local only multiplayer game mm -hmm. to um capture that uh fun i think we all used to have when we were kids like coming home right. from school playing with your friends in these local multiplayer games right uh and at the same time like in exploring their possibilities like you were sort of all learning the game together mm -hmm. um and that kind of event and i and i like that uya gives this opportunity to do it unapologetically and hidden in plain sight is one of those games that my non-gamer friends would ask to play and mm -hmm. get swept up in you know mm -hmm. for an hour in the evening um, did you find that like when you were creating the game or, um, do you like play test with your wife and kids? And so it kind of sort of gives it a broader audience or, um, I've, I've heard that before. I've heard people say, this is a game, even my wife wanted to play or something like that. <laughs> when, when I made the game, no, it was a very, um, isolated solo kind of experience. Um, I, I really sort of came up with the ideas. I, I fooled around with them on the screen. You know, I sat down literally on the floor with four controllers in front of me and just sort of see whether it would work out. Um, you know, I eventually did once I got, you know, a working prototype going, would take it to a friend's house um, and play over there. And, and that was the first inkling of an idea that I had that, whoa, this actually works. And they're actually having fun. And, and it wasn't by design. I mean, I wish I could take a lot of credit for it, uh, that I designed this game that is as fun as it is. No, I just thought it seemed like an interesting idea and it ended up being um, better than I intended it to be. So when do you have spare time? Well, how, do you, how do you fit development into your life? I, it's tough. Uh, I have had 
maybe you know a dozen different ideas that I've wanted to do since Hidden Plain State came out. I've made prototypes of probably you know half a dozen of those mm. uh, proof of concepts and things like that. Um, mm. But because my design aesthetic is really just you know. If I'm not having fun, I don't really want to carry through with something. Like I don't have any bottom line to meet up to. So I just sort of play around and see what strikes me and what doesn't. And um, so part of it is that I haven't really just been grabbed by an idea that I've wanted to follow through with. Part of it is just I have a life and a job and, and other things. That's another reason why I haven't put out anything since then is I'm really trying to recapture maybe, um, you know, fruitlessly recapture this uh, um, kind of lightning in a bottle of I made this fun game it was fun to make it didn't take very long it was easy um, and, and it's making a game is hard and, and this one just happened to, to churn out pretty quickly it is scary to do your follow up game right I think. it is <laughs> um, a blank that, slate is, uh, is intimidating yeah because the it, it can feel like the odds are against you as far as perception like you could only do there's you could do worse or the same or better but better is only one out of the three options yeah, right, right? right so what is your day what do you do by day so what do i do i'm a software developer at an investment management company All it's right. totally boring it's totally boring <laughs> to talk about um but it's a good job i've been there for like 13 years now um i like the people i work with it's it's it, it's a tough time to be in the investment management business you know with the economy uh what it is um but it's but it's nice to have it's nice to have a normal kind of stable nine to five sort of job that um I go and do, and then I can do game development, like I said, as a hobby or something fun to do. Um, I think there's enough stress in game development that I don't think I'd want to do that as a job i mean I, um yeah. You know, there's a bottom That's line. Fair. There's there, it, it would turn it would turn sort of the fun part of making games into work. I'd have to worry about you know repaying investments or all these and marketing and all this other sort of BS that I don't want to that I don't want to care about. Yeah, no, it's it's such a great point. I remember um, when I started a game development studio, I was told don't start a game company if you enjoy making games. Start <laughs> one if you enjoy running a business. I'm. Uh, sort of close with Andy Schatz, who just put out Monaco, right. and so I, f I, I follow a little bit along with um, just kind a of the fellow stuff that he San Diego developer. That's right, mm -hmm. um, and, and some of the stuff that he's gone through in terms of just meeting with people and marketing and all the business stuff, and um, that sounds like work. And and I already have a job, and I'm not interested in in giving up. Uh, you know, one sort of stable job that I enjoy for a more riskier proposition. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's certainly, no, I mean, it's something I think a lot of indie developers don't understand. They think um, that it's still very much based on quality. If you make a great game, then that's all. But, man, Andy is really great. And Alexander Bruce as well, who developed Antichamber, I mean... Mm -hmm they work at it. They definitely work at all sides of that business and doing yes. the marketing meetings and yeah. The idea, the marketing stuff specifically, um, just doesn't sound fun. I mean, I, I, I hate right. the idea of saying, hey, I made this game, come play it. Like that's just, <laughs> I don't know, it just, I, I have a hard time with that. <laughs> well, on that note, I'm going to say, <laughs> hey, come, <laughs> you made this game and come and play it. Yeah. Uh, you're also going to be at E3 at our outside of the convention hall booth. If you um, want me there, I'll be there. Oh, definitely. No, we'll yeah. have it set up. We'll have four players. Um, it's going to be so fun. It's gonna be awesome. That'd be great. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Thank you. You too.